All right, so he's going to bring out the Blondale uh, for us to enjoy at a slower pace. Yes. Um, why, <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit about that beer? Um, the the Blondale, we, we kind of designed it. it. It was supposed to be, the, the original name for it was Fizzy Yellow Beer. Um, a lot of the beers that we were making, the Porter, the English Ale, uh, they were all darker, um, and we, we wanted something a little bit lighter for, for people who, you know, I don't, I don't like dark beer, sort of like a, right. a, a gateway beer. Um, okay. So the, the, the blonde was designed after that. Um, it's not your, your typical blonde, it is 5% alcohol. Most blondes typically top out at about 4.5%. Um, but it's, ni it's got some nice sweetness, nice, uh, nice maltiness. Um, it's got a little bit of floral. We use German tradition hops in there, so it's got some okay. nice floral characteristics. Um, Munich malt for a little bit of sweetness, wheat, uh, wheat malt for a lot of complexity, uh, but we still use UK two row. Um, we, we always try to stick to our Just English. Out of curiosity, who's your monster? Chris or? Um... Baird, actually. Okay. We use Baird. Okay. For, for our uh, UK two row, and then Thomas Fawcett for Maris, and for most of our other malts, uh, the only thing we don't use is like our crystal malts. We get that from Brees. Okay. Um, I, I like their crystal malts a little bit better than the, the UK's version. Uh, a lot easier to work with, translates a lot easier as far as color and flavor uh, are concerned for myself. Um, you hear that? American malts. We're English and <laughs> we are an American brewery. We are heavily influenced by the British, but that doesn't stop us from being an American brewery. Right. No. Um, despite what Stuart says. Um, it's okay. So, in this uh, blonde, we actually we, we got ourselves a uh, lenticular filter a few months ago, which uh, we, okay. we put passed one beer through, and wow, then wow, that's got a lot of flavor in it. Yeah. We we passed one beer through it, and then I promptly broke it because I break everything here. Um, I'm actually trying to pass those duties off to my assistant. Yeah. You, well, you um, want someone else to break things. Yeah. That way, you know, if if it comes down to it, you're not the one that gets the boot exactly but yeah. I, I i did i did break the filter um okay. so we we've actually got that back up and running so this is one of the first ones to come through the filter since i fixed it well, so nice crystal clear, clear so um this is actually probably the only beer i will not put in cask this is a nightmare in cask this is really uh got a really malty um body to it for for how light it is. Yeah. I mean, it, blonde beers and light beers in general, I feel like they have this kind of stigma. If they're not IPA, then they're they're watered down. They don't have a whole lot of flavor. Um, you know, if it's not a half of ice and it's not an IPA, then people see light beers and they go, it's watered down. And I didn't want to do that. I'd like to have a little more flavor in my beer. I like to show beers complexity. Right. Um, and it just, it, it's an easy drinking beer. Um, wonderful for this time of year. Um, yeah. And it's just light, crisp, a little bit of carbonation dances off the palate. It's, it's just a fun beer to drink, easy to drink. Yeah, speaking of carbonation. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, and it's actually, it, it's, this one, actually, I have, we, we brewed our first batch when we were first figuring out the system, um, which consisted of like 24-hour brew days, like one batch, 24 hours. It's difficult to sleep on that kind of schedule. Yeah. Uh, well, I've, I've got pictures of Stuart sleeping. He was my assistant back before I had an assistant. Uh, so I do have some pictures of him sleeping on the brew stand. Uh, but our first batch of blonde came out at like 7.2. Um, That's high. Yeah. <laughs> so we've since fixed it, but I still get a little backlash every now and then. You know, when are you going to bring back that 7.2? Well, I don't know. Now, there's plenty of 7.2 beers in the world. Absolutely. Uh, what's the alcohol percentage on this? This one's five even. Okay. So mo most of your beers, so they're they're in the five to lower range. Um, the ESB is about five and a half. Um, okay. We have a, an IPA coming out that'll be about the six six and a half range. We're still waiting for it to finish fermenting. Right. Um, but yeah, we we try to keep things easy to drink, approachable. Um, you know, something that you you can have more than one of. Um, right. I, I like drinking beer because I enjoy drinking beer. Getting drunk is just a byproduct and a happy byproduct of that. But I, I don't I don't well, want to. There's getting drunk and then there's the room spinning. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I like to enjoy my beers before I eventually catch catch up to that point. Right. Um, and, and that's when when Stuart told me that's kind of his goal was you know not to go super crazy with it to 
you know, beer flavored beer. It's easy drinking, approachable, sessionable yeah. at some points. That that's what brought me on board. That's why Making I wanted to be a part of it. Making low alcohol beers can be challenging. Absolutely. Yeah. There's there's nothing to hide. You 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 know, you can't over malt it, you can't over hop it. You have to let the beer speak for itself. So, you know, once you get to the four percent range or below, uh, if there's anything wrong with your beer, you're gonna know and you're gonna know quick and it's gonna stand out. Right. Um, so that's it's it was one of the real big challenges um, when we were doing it on the, even the small batch system. Me learning the system was you know trying to figure out how I could do it and not screw it up and and really kind of learn what we were looking for, what we were going for. Um, so it's but I mean I've I've been really happy with everything that we've done so far. Uh, I'm sure there'll be something I won't be happy with. Um, I've I've already dumped down uh, you know a quarter of a batch of beer because I wasn't happy with it. Well, yeah, better better do that than to pass it off to your oh, customers. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. You probably shouldn't say stuff in front like that in front of your boss, though. He was there. He cried the whole time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, quarter batch for you guys, that's a lot. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, you're doing 60 barrel batches, right? Uh, 30 barrel. 30 barrel batches. 30 okay. barrel batches. Um, so we, uh, we, we wanted to start small. And, and eventually grow into it and build up. So that's why we started with 30 barrels. Okay. Um, you know, no other breweries are starting much bigger than we are, but we, we you know. Whatever works for you guys, <laughs> man. Just keep producing excellent beer.